Hi, Ms. Tucker here. Uh, we are watching our second video series um, in all you ever wanted to know about biochemistry. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple of the elements that we talked about yesterday. Remember, uh, we had our really important ones were carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And today we're going to focus mainly on carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen although a lot of these patterns will continue um, as we move forward. First off, carbon. Carbon is very important, probably the most important element in biochemistry. And when we um, talk about uh, atoms, people sometimes get a little spaced out and lost, not just because they're freshmen, um, it happens to everybody. And that's because they're really hard to think about. They're really, really small. We can't really see them without the, um, a, without the aid of some really powerful tools. So what we like to use with freshmen to keep them on task are Molly Mod. And Molly Mod are hands-on molecular models that we can use to build different structures in, um, in biology so that we kind of get an idea about what these things look like. So carbon um, in Molly Mod land looks like this and black, the color black will always represent carbon. So anytime you see black like this or this or this, get that a little bit closer, uh, that's always carbon. Uh, some important things to know about carbon. Um, this, of course, uh, carbon has uh, an atomic number of six, which you can find up here. And that just simply means um, it has six electrons and six protons. But what we're really interested in is that carbon can form up to four bonds with other things. So anytime if you want a happy carbon atom, it's going to have made all four of those bonds. And that's some things that we'll see as we move forward. Um, carbon can also form long chains. Carbon, and that's why when you hear somebody say that um, all life on Earth is carbon-based life, that's because carbon can form really long chains with itself, um, and I mean huge chains. Think about like a plastic bag. All of that plas all of that um, structure, if we zoomed all the way down, um, would just be long, long, long repeating chains of carbon. Um, that's really important. Some other interesting facts about carbon are that uh, about 20% of the weight in living organisms is carbon. So if you took it all apart, um, you would find that one-fifth of every single thing in me or you or your parents, each one of your parents, of course, would be uh, carbon. And the carbon atoms in your body were once part of carbon dioxide atoms floating around in the air. Um, and how that happens is a very cool story. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves, so we'll kind of, uh, we'll kind of put that on pause for now. And it is the fourth most abundant element in the entire universe, which I think is pretty cool to think about. So carbon is everywhere, which makes sense that life would have evolved um, with carbon as its base. So uh, let's move forward. Next we have hydrogen. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one, which you can find. This is a little kind of stylized periodic table entry. Um, and these are just some different representations of hydrogen. We've got hydrogen gas here, which is H2. And you also see H2 on this because uh, for a long time, and I think some universities are still doing research to figure out if we can use hydrogen gas um, to power cars. And the reason that we want to know that, um, and we're looking at it as a source, is because hydrogen is the most, like number one, the most abundant element in the entire universe. So it seems, you know, if we could figure out a way to safely, because it is very explosive, uh, hydrogen gas anyway, um, if we could figure out a way to safely use it for uh, car fuel, then that would be great because it is everywhere. Um, can make hydrogen can form form one bond so we're always only going to see it um, forming one bond with something else whether that be carbon uh, like in this example we've got one carbon and four hydrogens um, or in the case of water in the case of water where we've got one oxygen and uh, two hydrogens it only form one bond per hydrogen atom um, and another cool thing about hydrogen, it's about 10% of the weight uh, of any living organism. 
And mainly you see it, especially in humans, you see it in things like water, which is a big deal, and protein and fat. Moving right along, um, the next one that we're going to talk about is oxygen. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight, um, and it can form two bonds with other atoms. So just like the example, we always represent um, oxygen with a red Molly mod, and I forgot to do hydrogen. Hydrogen's a white one. So in our H2O example, which of course you already know is water, uh, we've got one oxygen atom, which is red, and then two hydrogen atoms, which are white. So this is what, at a, at a much larger scale, what a single molecule of water looks like. So of course you see each hydrogen has only made one bond, and oxygen has formed two bonds, one with each hydrogen so everybody's happy and one of water is pretty cool we'll get into that in tomorrow's lecture um the thing that you need to know that's the most important and i'm going to write this over here is that oxygen loves here i should do this um just to 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 you know picture how important it is we're going to do it in red oxygen loves electrons and oxygen a lot of times will steal electrons and pull electrons more to it um, more so than other atoms um, why all of that we'll get into much later but that's the maybe the most important thing you need to remember is that oxygen loves loves electrons very much so um, two-thirds of the weight of living things is an oxygen and most of it is bound in water um, you'll find out uh, a cool fact about water and organisms in just a second but um, there's a lot of oxygen and of course you also know and by uh, you know kind of is indicated here with uh, this flight attendant remember they show you how to pull the oxygen mask and how all of that works um, we require our we're oxygen to breathe as do a lot of organisms just about every animal on this planet not all of them but uh, just about every animal on this planet requires oxygen uh, to survive um, so it's very important and these are some lungs and that's kind of a creepy thing that I don't know what that is but we're just gonna ignore that picture for right now um, and then oxygen is the third most abundant element in the universe so just in carbon hydrogen and oxygen uh, let's see hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe uh, Oxygen is the third most abundant element in the universe, and carbon is the fourth. So there you've already got some pretty important elements that um, are the basis for most of the life on this planet. Uh, the last thing that we're going to talk about today um, is chemical bonds. And a chemical bond is defined as when atoms share or swap electrons to form molecules and compounds. In chemistry, you'll focus a lot more on the individu individual elements. Remember, our important elements are, of course, chomps, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Uh, but in chemistry, you'll focus much more on the individual elements. In biochemistry and most of biology, we are really interested in the molecules and the compounds. So molecules and compounds, and you don't have to know the difference between those. You can call them either one for as, long, as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is an example of uh, a molecule, and it's called uh, NaCl, which you may or may not know is table salt. So that's the kind of salt that you put on uh, your eggs in the morning, um, but not too much because it can cause health problems. Uh, the other one, um, that uh, another type of chemical bond that we're going to look at uh, is this kind of bond, and of course you all saw this um, in my cute little molly mod it's kind of like a Mickey Mouse structure right um, but in this particular diagram that you're looking at over here uh, this guy is oriented like that where you've got oxygen and hydrogens uh, coming together so these are two different kinds of chemical bonds you don't have to know the difference for them right now um, you just need to know that there are different types of chemical bonds that occur um, and just to kind of wrap up some important terms and ideas, uh, what a, you need to know what a chemical bond is, you need to know um, what an atomic number tells us, which is the number of protons and the number of electrons, and most of the time those are the same. 
And also you need to remember how many bonds each uh, atom of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen can form. So just a quick review, carbon can form four bonds, hydrogen can form, anyone? One bond, and oxygen can form two bonds. So if you need to go back and watch the video, we covered a little bit more today, be my guest. Don't forget to take the Quia quiz before your class meets and uh, have an excellent evening. I'll see you very soon.